Okay, my next example, find the measure of each numbered angle, which means I need to find measure of angle 1, measure of angle 2, and measure of angle 3, okay? So, um, let's see here. I have two triangles. I have a triangle right here. I have a triangle right here. Now, if you get this type of problem or you get a problem with um, kind of, it looks a little complicated, um, a little confusing, kind of a big diagram, then just take a second and just just observe it. Just look, take a, just take a closer look, see what you have. So I see here that I have two triangles, okay? Because we know that this lesson is on triangles. So I'm going to look for triangles. I also have exterior, an exterior angle. I have two parallel lines, okay? This means that you have parallel lines right there. Now I want to find all three angles, but the measure of all three of them. Since I have an exterior angle, I'm thinking that I might have to use the exterior angle theorem, which I do because I have two remote interior angles, which is a 42 and then measure of angle 3, right? So to find measure of angle 3, let's just do it here, measure of angle 3 plus 42 equals 110. That's the exterior angle theorem, right? Exterior angle equals the sum of the two remote interior angles. So if I subtract the 42, measure of angle 3 equals 68. Then if this is 68, Let's see here. Okay, so how am I going to find measure of angle 1 and 2? Well, um, maybe I can use triangle sum theorem for 1 and 2, but look, I'm missing two angles. I'm missing one, this angle, and this angle. I only have the measure of this angle, so I can't use angle sum theorem yet. Okay? Um, but what I can do is look at my parallel lines. Okay, if that helps, just just extend out the line so it'll be easier to see your two parallel lines. And then the line that's crossing both is your transversal. So you could extend that if you want to. And then um, you can also kind of move your book or maybe move your pen or paper if it's on paper. Um, and try to look, look at the parallel line so that it would be horizontal or vertical. Okay, just whichever is easiest for you to see. And then you can see that this angle right here and this angle right here are alternate interior angles. Now, 48 and 68, are those alternate interior angles? Yes, they are, but because the two lines that it's that it's that um, are used to form those two angles are not parallel. That's why we have two different angle measures, 48 here and 68 here, okay? If these two lines were parallel, then this one and this one would have to be congruent. But those, li those lines are not parallel. So yeah, they're still alternate interior angles, but since the lines are not parallel, they're not congruent. Their, their relationship would just be um, alternate interior angles. They're only congruent if the lines are parallel. In this case, okay, with these lines, okay, and this transversal, because those are the lines that are used to form those angles, since the lines are parallel, these two would be congruent. So measure of angle 2, I know, is going to be 42. Okay, so this one's going to be 42 also. Then... How do I find measure of angle 1? Now that I have the two angles of this triangle, I can use the angle sum theorem to find measure of angle 1. So measure of angle 1 is going to be, or measure of angle 1, add it to 48 and 42, and that's going to give you 180. Okay, angle sum theorem. So measure of angle 1, plus 
This is 90 equals 180. I subtract the 90, so measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. This one right here is 90 degrees. Okay? So again, um, just kind of take a look at your diagram. Let's see what you have. Uh, look to see what you don't have. And how you can, um, what you can use. Okay, you're, they're always going to give you what you need. Like here, they gave me parallel lines. And an exterior angle. Okay? So that's it for this lesson. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching educator.com.